everybody, and welcome to another episode of Paul and All. As always, I'm your host, Paul Casey, and I'm joined today by arguably one of the easiest people to actually get on the show, but hasn't been on the show in quite a while. Go ahead and reintroduce yourself. I'm Paul's mom, Ruth Casey. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, in our living room, dining room. <laughs> we are, yeah. The clock shelf studio, mom. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Keep up the, the mystery. Oops. Um, so we didn't really have anything to talk about. We were going, because this episode is coming out on Black Friday, we were going to originally, I I wanted to get you because as you often claim, whenever I'm telling stories about my job for money that we don't name, just, you know. Yes, I know. Um, but I often claim, uh, you know, retail stories and things like that. And you argue back or, or say back. I worked in retail. You worked in retail. Yes. You worked in retail and everything. I, every time I say something about like, Oh, retail, whatever you're like, well, I worked in retail. And as I always point out, that was like 30, almost 30 years ago. Things are, some are the same, some are different. Um, but I figured, especially my line of work, black Friday tends to be an incredibly slow day, but in your line of retail when you worked it as but while well, worked it and you've shopped Black Friday I thought yeah. maybe you might have some interesting stories do you Well I mean there's always the fun of you know as a an employee when you're you know scheduled to start at six o'clock and you get to work for you know 10 to six because you know you want to be a couple minutes early and there granted I worked retail back in the 80s so that was a bit different than it is now because everybody can shop online and and unfortunately Black Friday isn't a day anymore now it's a week oh wait I'm sorry really quick let's clear up the fact that Black Friday is not a racist term no despite what anybody wants to say I often see things online where people are talking about Black Friday and they like I've seen things where it's like oh how much longer can we say Black Friday until that becomes racist and things like that and I've seen it over the last few years where people will post things about um, the day after Thanksgiving slaves were being sold and that's why it's Black Friday not the case at all have you ever seen this where people say that or think that it's going to be uh you know deemed inappropriate to say only when you say it okay (laughs) but black friday was the the date when you know in business there's red ink which means you have debt and black ink which is where you have a surplus and when you keep your books that's what the difference is so black friday was the chance to get in the black in the holiday you know, getting ready for the holiday season. But as I started to say, back in the 80s, people went out to the stores. Not so, I mean, I guess they do now. Sorry. I guess they do now, but uh, Paul just gave me the I'm talking too loud symbol. So, um, but back in the 80s, they actually went out to the stores. Um, Your sales ads didn't come out until, um, most times they didn't come out until the Thursday, until Thanksgiving day you got the ad in the paper, maybe Wednesday if you were lucky, but the ads didn't break until Thursday because the idea was you wanted to, as, as a retailer, you wanted to keep people guessing what your Black Friday specials were. So in a lot of respects on uh, Thanksgiving night, uh, when years ago I went shopping on Black Friday twice ever because I realized what a nightmare it is. But anyway, what we did was on Thanksgiving night, we all got together and we made a game plan and there were uh, five or six of us. And so everybody had their list from the um, like uh, Toys R Us ads that they, they wanted this or that, or, you know, Kmart or whatever the big stores were. And so everybody had their lists. So we'd all sit down together and everybody would compare notes and, okay, so you want this from, from that store. And I want this from that store. Okay. So you guys go to this store and you pick up your things and my things and the other group's things. And we're going to go to this other store. And so it would be like, a big game plan and everybody would say, all right, this is what we're going to do. And at three o'clock, everybody has their part to play. Yes. And at about three o'clock in the morning, everybody would head out to go to their stores. And uh, and as I started to say, I would get to work when back when I was working in retail, um, I would go to the store and I was scheduled to start at six o'clock because the ads, well, the stores opened at six at that point, there was no open all night and whatever. So 
you were there and you were scheduled to start at six. So as a cashier, I didn't have to be there until about 10 minutes early just so that I could have my register open when the, when the store was opening. But you couldn't get near the door because the line of people would be out the parking lot. Well, I no, remember- wait, they didn't have a separate entrance for, because you would presumably unlock the door and they would all want to be charging in. You didn't have a no, actually, we separate had, entrance for uh, there employees. Was, there was a manager inside and you rang a bell and the manager came to the door and let you in. And that was but all. But how do you stop? Uh, basically, because you see, they I had mean, security. I was gonna say, because you see it on TV, yeah, and it would be like a they, stampede they had, of they people. They had security, but like when I went shopping, um, at one point uh, we went to uh, we went past the Toys R Us because we were headed somewhere else. But the line from the Toys R Us was um, the the width of the parking lot. I mean, it was huge. People were in line, and then there was a, a big fight because. There were people who pulled in after the line was already in place and they sat in their car near the door. And when it was close to time to open, they got out of their car and caused almost a riot because they were just headed to the door. They weren't going to wait in line. They were there and they were just going to go right up to the door. And security, well, the, the store security told them that they had to leave because they weren't opening the doors until they left the door area and ended up calling the uh, township police because they almost had a riot because people were furious because, you know, you play fair and, you know, we teach the kids in my job, we teach the kids, you know, you take turns, you're in line and whatever. And these people, it was cold. Granted, there were people who were... I I mean, I understand that, but like... Doors, especially on those on on stores like that, like a like a Walmart or something, they're rather wide. So I don't understand the concept of forming a like if you were, if you were going through a doorway, like when you go into a home, that's a like a single file line. When you have wide open, well, some doors of the, like some that, of the stores, what they would do why is wait in line <laughs> because um, because some of the stores, what they would do is when there were. Um, certain items that were oh, very first, popular. like 100 people. Right. Yeah. So, sometimes they only had limited numbers of things. So, like, um, I know that the store that um, that I worked at, um, if they had uh, big TVs, was a, a, a TVs were a big ticket item. And so what they would do is um, they had someone at the front of the store and they would give you a ticket to get your item and they only had say 25 of them they weren't even out on the floor they were in the stock room and you had to go to a specific place and present your ticket in no, wait, order they would to go get... they would go like through the line waiting outside oh what are you here for oh i'm here for the tv oh, okay you're well, one no. of the first 25 people here's a ticket no actually they would wait till you were in the store because what but would how ha- do you judge that because like i said you i've seen i mean granted it's only on tv but i've seen when you know people are like pounding on the door let us in let us in and then you see like the first two or three people end up getting trampled because everybody just well that's the that's the thing is that's why they in. have so much security in some of those situations like toys r us used to do that a lot because um back when um uh, my niece Melissa was little cabbage patch dolls were the big thing. And I remember one time at Toys R Us, I think it was Toys R Us, one of the stores. Anyway, they literally, the manager came out and was throwing the dolls into the parking lot. Okay. What just happened now was my mother broke arguably my number one rule when being on one of these (laughs) shows and didn't turn her phone notifications. I'm sorry. Normally I have it off all the time. And And Paul's always yelling at me because what do I what do I have a phone for you for if you never answer it? But anyway, so they would they would throw the at that point they threw the dolls into the crowd because there was such an overabundance. So anyway, they um, but but people would be like lined up raring to get in and they were obnoxious, you know, like you see on TV. Um, I know you're going to remember the Friends episode when they were looking for the dress. Correct. You know? Yes. And so that was kind of what it was like on Black Friday. Well, now people are, more people are shopping online. Black Friday starts on. Oh, yeah, uh, I see. I keep seeing advertisements. I I know people are talking about uh, five or six o'clock on Thanksgiving night. A lot of your Black Friday stuff is starting. In some situations, the Black Friday sale uh, started on Monday. 
Right. You know what I mean? So you could, you it's could almost, it's, it's almost become a catch all term as opposed to a yes. singular day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sort of like, um, explain to me why president's day weekend is the entire month of February. Um, you know, the 4th of July sales go to August and, you know, like, um, well, I don't know if we're going to get into things like that. Explain to me. I just saw a thing in my Facebook memories. Explain to me why uh, they're not called ABC Family anymore. What is it? Freeform. I don't know if they still do it now that they've changed their name. But their thing was uh, they do the 25 days of Christmas where on December 1st, you know, they're showing Christmas movies, but then before, the, which is a countdown to Christmas, and they do one for Halloween, 13 days of Halloween, and what do they do before that? They do countdown to 25 days of Christmas. Yes. It's yeah. a countdown to, to a, a countdown. countdown. Can anyone out there in the internet land explain Mini that muffins. to me? <laughs> Mini cupcakes, miniature cupcakes. It's, that's what you're yeah. thinking of. Yes, from the office, a, a thing where Kevin, the character Kevin, and he's and I quote it very often whenever I see miniature cupcakes. I want to just throw them because his his thing is mini cupcakes, which are miniature versions of cupcakes, which are already a miniature version of a cake. And to quote him at the end, where does it end with you people? <laughs> but anyway, you know, uh, Black Friday sales used to be crazy. Now they're more well, because you have Cyber Monday now. Yeah, and you have uh Small Business Saturday, which oh, is that a this, thing? I don't yes, know. Yes, actually ever heard of this that. coming Saturday is Small Business Saturday. And as a small business owner, it's always good to promote um shop local, uh you know places in your area, you know, shop small businesses because a lot of times they get shoved out because your big box stores have this and that and the other thing. Right. And, you know, I wonder if any of, I'm sorry. I'm not, I mean, obviously I find this stuff interesting. I think a lot of other people do as well, but like, uh, you know, a lot of my international friends, uh, Canadian friends, British friends, Australian friends, whatever. And they're, they're probably listening. It's like when we post things about like, oh, happy Memorial Day or happy Veterans Day, you know, on Facebook or Twitter or something or happy Thanksgiving. And like I've sent things to friends from Europe and whatever. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, I know you don't have it there, but like it's Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, I am thankful for your friendship or whatever. And they're just like, sure thing, buddy. Like they have <laughs> yeah, no they idea have no what to say. Or um, I saw one the other day and uh, somebody was commenting about they did something for Thanksgiving and they're like, you know, the true Thanksgiving in Canada in it was October. October. <laughs> you and, you know, I I have Canadian friends. I love my Canadian friends. I, I actually like Canada. Uh, but uh, as uh, Barney Stinson said, when Robin Scherbatsky explained what what Canadian Thanksgiving is for. I don't know if you know, it's to sell it. Cause like ours is at least the, the version that we're told is, you know, uh, the, the, whatever the politically correct terms are, the kid, the, the, col the colonials, the colonists and the Indians sat down and had a feast because, you know, the, the harvest was bountiful that year and to sit in peace and harmony before they went back to ripping each other to shreds or whatever. I don't know the whole story, <laughs> but, um, that's what we say at least. Um, but in Canada and please someone out there, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going just based off of the information from how I met your mother. It's something along the lines of somebody, uh, it was their valiant yet ultimately unsuccessful attempt to navigate a river or something like that. And basically, so they're celebrating someone's failure. They're remembering <laughs> someone's failure. And as Barney looks up at the sky and he goes, Canada, why do we continue to let you be a country? <laughs> <laughs> we love Canada. But, you know. um, well, it's but funny now. Okay. Speak Canada. Uh, when I've met people, when uh, the few times, you know, the two times I was, I was in Hawaii and I talked to other people and I'll say things about Canada and, and people go, Oh, have you ever been there? And I always say, I was only in the most American part of Canada and the Canadians that I know and people who, uh, Americans who have been to various other parts of Canada basically say, oh yeah, no, you haven't been to Canada, Canada, yeah. because I've been to Niagara Falls, Canada, which is arguably possibly more, maybe on par with like Vancouver, like the most American part yeah. of Canada. Actually, have you ever been to? No, you actually were a little bit further into Canada um, we were along the Niagara River when we when we did the the jet boat tours. 
Oh yeah, right. We were like right on the edge of the, the. We yeah, we the, followed the the river. What and, is that thing where it's like the five category five? Oh yeah, hurricane or not hurricane? We were at the at the furthest point up the Niagara River that you can go before you hit the falls, and uh, it becomes a giant fine to yeah. go into that. It's like they take you like right to the edge. Yeah, they told us at the time that. Um, for the jet boat operator to go any further up the river, it would be a $10,000 fine per, per person. person on the boat for them to go any further up the rapids. But we had a lot of fun. We actually, um, we went to the Butterfly Museum as well. Do you remember? Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot you don't remember. There's a lot um, I don't remember, no. But, but yeah, we had a we had a lot of fun on the jet boats, which I felt really bad because your dad just sat on the shore waiting for us to come back after our, what was it, like two hours or something? It was pretty long. It was pretty yeah. long. And he just, I think he had a book in the car I'm or something. Sure yeah. Did, yeah. Um, but you've never, other than like Niagara Falls or like that, like you've never been to no. like other parts of no, Canada? No, I would like to someday, but yeah. no, I haven't, um, I haven't had the opportunity um, but yeah, that's what I tell people. I tell them I've been to the most American <laughs> part because I mean, like I said, it, it, is. it is. It is. It's very. It's very and touristy. It's, it's. It is. It's a. It's a tourist trap, basically. And the <laughs> funny thing is that the Canadian side of the falls is more commercial than the American side. Right, because the American side tends to be your more historical. It, yeah, it's section. a nat- It's a natural. Um, not a natural. It's a national park. Yeah. And the Canadian side is very touristy with well, the giant would, Ferris wheel. And which the, I didn't go. You went on that. Yes, I did. You and Dad were terrified. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I went on the giant. I would probably go on the London Eye, though. That's what it's called, right? The giant Ferris wheel that's in the middle of London. I don't know. I'm, I'm Andy, I'm hoping you're listening to this and you could message me going, uh, yeah, mate, or, you know, whatever, but, um, or like, no, you're, you're dumb or you know, something <laughs> like that. Like it's obvious. It's, it's this Paul, like, come on, but you, there think was you also, know England. Do you, do you remember the giant, um, uh, what was it? Uh, T-Rex where they had the mini golf? No. Oh, there was a, a big, uh, plaster, uh, T-Rex for the, they had mini golf in, um, in Niagara Falls, Canada, and there was a there was a big uh, T Rex there. No clue. I, I, it actually, it's funny because it actually just came up on my. Um, yeah, you know, I told you why because it's. Uh, I was so late to Facebook. Yeah, and that, so, when you transferred your pictures. Yeah, over. when I tra- it was it was a few months because I got on Facebook um, after I got out of high school, and that was like everybody else had already been on there at that point, and uh, you know. Um, I waited a few months because I was still I was a, I was a diehard MySpace person and I was a Twitter person. To be fair, I was on. I mean, I don't want to sound like a hipster, but I really was on Twitter like long before it blew up. Thanks to. But a if you want to see some really funny pictures of Paul and me, go to his. Uh, if you're if you're friends with him on Facebook, is your page is your page public? My f- personal Facebook page is public. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So go to his Niagara Falls photos because. <laughs> There are some really funny ones on there. Um, I have very long hair in those. Um, well, at least in the, well, I know in the Orlando, Florida ones, I have long hair. I think in Niagara Falls, no, in Florida, I had long oh, hair. Oh, I know you did in Florida. I believe in Niagara Falls, I had long hair too. I was actually just thinking about it the other day. I was thinking about um, maybe for the wind, obviously for the winter, I tend to grow my hair out a little longer, grow my beard a little thicker. But I'm thinking if I can get it, because I... Please don't do a man bun. Please no, oh, don't. no, goodness, no, I would never do that. No, no, Melissa no. Melissa will cut it off in your sleep. I, I know was, this. Uh, no, I was thinking that if I could, because my hair is naturally curly, and so if I can just get over that initial hump of it, it curling, if I can get it so that it grows and it's a little bit straighter, I would, I would, I would like to have like long, straight hair. <laughs> You're never gonna have long, straight hair. I can straighten it. Well, yeah, but that's a that's an everyday, multiple times a day process, or highly expensive. Anyway, we got way off track. We were talking about nothing. Actually. We were talking about Black Friday, wait, wait, whatever. Wait, wait. We we were talking about this, Black Friday. I know, but this episode is the Seinfeld show. Sure, I've, every can... episode of this is kind of the Seinfeld. show. Well, no, show. because sometimes we have. An agenda, like well, technically speaking, I do have an agenda because there the, was there's at least one funny. Well, I thought it was hilarious. I was 
legitimately cracking up laughing at work reading this article the other day. And I, I saved it because I thought, oh, when we sit down, this will be an interesting thing because I not only want to hear your opinion, but I just think it's a crazy news story. So technically speaking, I did have an agenda. We actually did have an agenda as well because we thought like, oh, let's talk a little bit about Black Friday shopping. Black Friday. But then we went, no, because I really don't have any stories. And hey, what do you know? I did have stories. Yes, you did. How about that? Uh Talk about cracking up. We were we were playing earlier with uh, we were playing earlier. That sounded really bad. Uh, Paul's cousin was over um, after a Thanksgiving dinner, and we were uh, we I bought a, a '90s Trivial Pursuit game at uh, one of the local thrift stores, and of course we thought, oh well, Melissa was a kid in the '90s. Paul was a kid in the '90s. Let's um. Let's play some 90s trivia. And then um, I checked the game and there were pieces missing. So so we just sat around so we reading, just sat around reading trivia, questions trivia questions to each other. And laughing hysterically over some of the really just weirdly worded questions. It's, well, it's not just the fact that it's weirdly worded, but like within our family, there's so many inside jokes. Yes. And so it's... Really, I mean, if anybody were to have listened to that, they wouldn't have understood certain. Yeah, ones. there there were some things that we just laugh at because but there were because just- because like when I was because I'm I'm one of the youngest and she's the oldest of of my cousins on that side of the family. So and she jokingly said like, "Oh, I raised him well because she did used to look after me quite a bit." So um, certain stuff with a, 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 some of your pop culture stuff, she quote unquote taught me. She she influenced his taste in music, his taste in. Uh, oh, but to TV be fair, shows. a lot of things influenced my taste in music and TV shows. But just in terms of that, like some of those things. Yeah. But the, my favorite part, and I kept saying it to both of you, was. Uh, when the two of you couldn't remember certain words and I'm just like, Oh, this is fun. And I was, just <laughs> yeah. When, when I like, I knew, uh, one of the questions was, I don't remember what it was, but there was like, I was trying to think of, um, the, uh, the actor who played Willis in different strokes and I couldn't think, and I knew it was Todd and I'm going, Todd, what? And I had this like look on my face, like, oh my gosh, I know this. I know. And I forget a lot of things. So I'm like, oh my, I had to look it up. Yeah. It was Todd Bridges, just in case anybody was curious. Cause it's one of those ah, things. Um, okay. So I do have this article here and I actually have a separate tab open with like weird news and things like that, just in case, uh, oh, we, we but won't. wait, before we go, uh, because we were talking about black Friday and this is going to go up on black Friday. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, in the comments down below, tell no, us. No, this there's no. It's it's podcast now. They don't have. Oh, comments. bummer! They it's could, not going to go on YouTube. Uh, not for a while, probably. Okay, so then message clock shelves. Uh, tweet us any of that stuff. You know how to get in touch with us. I'll say it again at the He'll end. I'll say it again at the end. But anyway, uh, send us your favorite uh, Black Friday stories because I actually just read an article of some really like uh, employees tell their their Black Friday stories. And some of them were really a lot better than mine because mine were kind of boring. But they, they well, yeah, had some. They re- would, yeah, because, well, presumably people submit them and I wouldn't have chosen yours. To no, I wouldn't either. either. No, absolutely not. You know, I mean, the I mystery am- pooper was a much better story than mine. And if you're interested, uh, I'll look it up later and have Paul post how to find the mystery pooper story yeah, okay, on Black I don't Friday. Remember that one, you but, didn't, um, you didn't read that article. I no, I, I know, but you, I thought you had told me, but I don't you remember. You wouldn't let me but, tell you the mystery. Oh yeah. No, we were like eating yeah. dinner or something. Oh, yeah. And you're like, no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm still, I'm still not over the fact that, uh, my own mother, uh, one of my biggest supporters with all things clock shelves doesn't know how my show goes out, uh, now. And, uh, <laughs> I get so confused. You have so much going on. You have so much social oh, no, media no, no, that no, I'm no, not no. even, don't, a even part don't even of. don't even try to don't even try okay, to yeah, bring it back. To I don't listen <laughs> don't to try it. to because redeem yourself now. <laughs> part of it is because I get to hear half of like his Lost with Friends um, podcasts. I get to hear his half, which is really weird because when he records Lost with Friends, he has headphones on. So when we're home and he's recording. I can hear his half of the conversations and not the other half, which is really interesting because... Well, to be fair, I mean, really, anybody who's ever listened to a phone conversation 
gets to hear things like that. Right, too. but I can hear your half of the conversation all the way down the hallway in my room with the door closed. It's true. I tend in to my sleep. The one time yeah. he woke me because I, I actually texted him and said, yep. with, <laughs> down the hall with the door closed, sound asleep. And you woke me up because I, t- yeah. I tend to talk a little bit louder because I have the headphones in and because the person that I'm talking to is talking directly into my ears. But I think people would understand and, and I could be forgiven for that. OK, um, continue. You OK, so this is this is uh, OK. So you know what the the Flat Earth Society is? No. You don't know the flat. There's it's a it's a group of people out there in the world who continue to believe and and fight to prove the concept that the Earth is flat and that mainstream science and uh, everything has lied to us about the fact that the Earth is round. Let's see if I can find before I uh, go to read this article. Let's see if they have like a mission statement or something that I can that I can read. Um, uh, okay. I'm trying to flat earth. I know they have, Oh, modern flat earth societies. Uh, Wikipedia says modern flat earth societies consist of individuals who promote the idea that the earth is flat rather than an oblate spheroid. Oblate, 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 oblate spheroid. Such groups date from the middle of the 20th century. Some adherents are serious and some are not. Those who are serious are often motivated by pseudoscience or religious literalism. In the modern era, through the use of social media, flat earth theories have been increasingly espoused by individuals unaffiliated with larger groups, many of which have members around the world, which that around the world is funny for the flat earth society. Now I'm just going to say straight up, if you are a flat earther out there, I apologize because this article and my laughter and everything is about to be uh, terrible. And you may tune out of this show. And I completely agree with that because there are certain things that I do or don't believe that if I didn't agree, if someone was making fun of, I would probably stop listening as well. I don't believe in flat earthism. So this is very much going to be a, uh, I don't want to say flat earth bashing thing, but I I don't believe it. I highly doubt you believe it at all. No, actually, as far as um, uh, them saying that, you know, uh, basing it on biblically, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about um, sitting above the 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 ring of the earth. Yeah. So if the Bible talks about the earth being a ring, where do they base that on? You know? Well it doesn't have to be that religion. Well that's true. But in general, um I think most of your ma- at least Western religions. Yeah, most Western religions are based on the uh Judeo Christian right belief system. So right. you know um but OK, so this article is from uh, I'm reading it from The Washington Post. Basically, everywhere has it. If you type as of as of this recording and the airing of this uh, episode, if you type in flat earth and you click on the news section, this will probably be the top thing in most of your major news outlets. Uh, but I'm reading this one specifically from The Washington Post written by Avi Selk from November 21st. The article is titled. This man is about to launch himself in his homemade rocket to prove the Earth is flat. Describe the look you just gave. <laughs> um, perplexed. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I'm trying trying to think of um, how does he presume? Okay, continue the story okay. because I'm I'm just like okay. Yeah, perplexed um, is a good word. Seeking to prove that a conspiracy of astronauts... Fab- I'm pretty much going to read this article verbatim, and as, as, as stuff happens, we can discuss it. Okay. Seeking to prove that a conspiracy of astronauts Wait, really long fabricated the shape of the Earth, a Californian man tends, intends to launch himself 1,800 feet on Saturday. I don't know what that would be for international listeners. I'm sorry. Uh, 1,800 feet on Saturday in a rocket he built from scrap metal. So, of course, that will happen the day after this episode goes out for the very first time. Assuming the 500-mile-per-hour 
mile long flight. And again, this is all written based off of the American system. So I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, I looked it up and. 1,800 feet is, is how long? 548.64 meters. Okay. Uh, so the rest of that, the rest of this math you'll have to do on your own. But, um, okay, it says, assuming the 500 mile per hour mile long flight through the Mojave Desert does not kill him, Mike Hughes told the Associated Press his journey into the Atmos Flat, w- Atmos Flat, I like that, <laughs> will mark... Oh, yeah, because it can't be an Atmos sphere. Yeah, the Atmos Flat will mark the first phase of his ambitious Flat Earth space program. Hughes's ultimate goal is a subsequent launch that puts him miles above the Earth, where the 61-year-old limousine driver hopes to photograph proof of the disk we all live on. Quote, it'll shut the door on this ball Earth, unquote, uh, Hughes said in a fundraising interview with a flat Earth group for Saturday's flight. Theories discussed in during the interview included NASA being controlled by round earth Freemasons and Elon Musk making fake rockets from blimps. You know who Elon Musk is, right? Uh, I want to say that's the Tesla guy. Okay. The guy who owns, I, I'm, I'm could be mistaken okay. on that. Um, Hughes promised the flat earth community that he would expose the conspiracy with his steam powered rocket, which will launch from a heavily modified mobile home, though he acknowledged that he still had much to learn about rocket science. (laughs) Well, thank God he's only launching himself, you know, like seriously, this whole tech thing. He said in a June interview, I'm really behind the eight ball. That said, Hughes isn't a... Oh, wait, t- is the eight ball round or is I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, then. <laughs> Sorry, that was just... That, that said, Hughes isn't a totally unproven engineer. He set a Guinness World Record in 2002 for a limousine jump, according to Ars Technica, and has been building rockets for years, albeit with mixed results. Now, there is a link in this article to a video from... I want to say 2014 or something. Uh, it's and it, it, what this what's next in this article describes that video. But I clicked off of this article to watch that video the other day. I will show you when we're done recording. And oh my goodness! Okay, so the video. Is that the part where you laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed? No, just some of these things where he said, like the the quote of. Uh, I'll, it'll shut the door on this ball earth. Like, who talks like that? I mean, I would talk like that, but who else would talk like that? Um, okay, so here's, this is, again, from the video. Okay, Waldo, three, two, one, someone yells in a test fire video from 2012. There's a brief hiss of boiling water, then nothing. So Hughes walks up to the engine and pokes it with a stick, at which point a thick cloud of steam belches out toward the camera. These are the parts that I laughed at. (laughs) He pokes it with a stick. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. He built his first manned rocket in 2014, the Associated Press reported, and managed to fly a quarter mile over Winkleman, Arizona. As seen in a YouTube video, the flight ended with Hughes. This is, I'm sorry, this is the one that I actually watched, not the other one. So I do apologize. This is the one. As seen in a YouTube video, the flight ended with Hughes being dragged, moaning from the remains of the rocket. The injuries he suffered put him in a walker for two weeks. That's the video I watched where I watched it with my jaw, my mouth agape, my jaw almost to the floor because I'm like, holy crap. Wow. Um, and in, and, and, the, and so, so wait, that was just a rocket to do what? And, and he, he's going to basically to, test and, and he's going to launch himself into space. Okay. Um, okay, so it continu- the article continues, and the 2014 flight was only a quarter of the distance of Saturday's mile-long attempt, and it was based on round-earth technology. Hughes only recently converted to flat-earthism after struggling for months to raise funds for his follow-up flight over the Mojave. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So this is all a publicity stunt. And that's what I realized while, get, while yeah. going this okay, far into so, the article. So he's trying to... So what, he, he, what did he do? He, he got support from the flat-earth people so that he could 
basically, basically he could he could fly and then say to them, "Ah, see, I'm using your money to prove your theories," when really he's using their money to further whatever his, his own, own goal yeah, is. Yeah, right. So yeah. so it's all a publicity stunt. So he doesn't even believe that the Earth. He probably doesn't believe that the Earth is flat. He's just, he's using, just their, using their their buzzwords and he's yeah. using their uh, gullibility to. Well, yeah, uh, but I mean, he's also using their their word like their phrasings to get them to right. But he's, I, I think that he's using the fact that they want to believe this oh, so badly. Oh yeah, 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 that, for sure. You know, that's using, that's why he's using their like it would be the same thing like if you're trying to convince anybody. To right, but he's 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 realistically he's swindling them because he's using their vulnerability and their gullibility in believing that that what, this will prove their the, right and, theory, and yeah. basically all he wants to do is he wants to go up into space and he needed somebody else to finance it because he couldn't afford to finance it so he's Oh yeah, no. Here, here we go. Wow, it was sucker. it was originally scheduled for early 2016 in a Kickstarter campaign from garage to outer space that mentioned nothing about Illuminati astronauts and was themed after a NASCAR event. Quote: We want to do this and basically thumb our noses at all these billionaires trying to do this. Unquote. Uh, Hughes said in the pitch video standing in his Apple Valley, California living room, which he had plastered with drawings of his rockets, quote, they have not put a man in space yet. Hughes said there are 20 different space agencies here in America, and I'm the last person that's put a man in a rocket and launched it, unquote. (laughs) But he said he's the last. First he said they didn't do it at all, and now he's saying he was the last one to do it. I don't think he knows. Right. <laughs> I, you I, think? <laughs> I, I can't imagine. I was going to say I can't imagine who would give him money, but then again, they're, oh, well, according well, oh, to P.T. Barnum, there's a sucker born every minute. Right. Oh, well, here, it gets even better. Comparing himself to evil Knievel, he promised to launch himself from a California racetrack that year as the first step in his steam-powered leap towards space. The Kickstarter raised three hundred and ten dollars <laughs> of its of no 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 it raised three hundred and ten dollars, which is a lot. You think like who on earth would give him three hundred and ten dollars, right? His goal one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so what's he only the, raised 300 percentage there? <laughs> I can't math, but you yeah. Know. Uh, Hughes made other pitches, including a plan to fly over Texas in a sky limo. Okay, what you're missing when Paul says things like la la is the air, air quotes, quotes that yeah. you can't see. So but I do gotta... tend to put it in words that like sky limo. So like, I mean, in my mind, I would picture someone saying that right. in air but quotes. But you yes. gotta, you gotta yeah. say Qu- the air quotes. Quote because... unquote sky limo. Yeah, because uh, nobody but... else other than me can see that little twisty thing that you do when yeah, you do true. air yeah. quotes. I'll have to make that into like a gif or something. Yes, air <laughs> quotes. <laughs> um, but he complained to Ars My Tech. My chair is really squeaky. Is it that is. Gonna, is that going to be a oh, problem? Oh, yeah, probably. I'm so sorry. Uh, but he complained to Ars Technica last year about the difficulty of funding his dreams on a chauffeur's meager salary, which, of course, would be. And then it says a year later, he called into the Flat Earth Community web show to announce that he had become a recent convert. You know, it's kind. It's not funny, but it's amazing how recent converts are like the biggest wackos out there. Like, um, that sounds terrible. That did sound really that terrible. Really bad. And you are like the, you are, you are, you have very controversial opinions on a lot of things. You never voice them because of your public persona. Okay. And so like, it's, that was, I can't believe I got you to say that on microphone. I, I'm going to, I'm going to get woken up in a few hours going, Paul, Paul, you need to cut that out. No, <laughs> no. But what I mean is like, okay. So somebody who quits smoking right, is suddenly the world's biggest promoter of quitting smoking. Or uh, recently there was a big controversy locally about a person who within the last two years has become a vegan. And so they said some so, really so they're awful the, they're things. they're the most foremost person on vegan. Yes, yeah. yeah. They're so the th- expert. Well, not just the expert, but they're like the most vocal. It's kind of like when... Um, 
somebody just gets married and suddenly they have all, all the their marriage. friends will all their friends have to get you know all their friends need to they need to hook up all their friends oh yeah okay yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So it's like... I thought you were going to say they're the one who comes with all... You know, being a married man now, I, yeah. I got to say, you know, no, things, no. things are... You, you don't quite understand it the way that I have it. No. It's just like, dude, like yesterday you weren't married. Yeah, Like, no. don't give me that. <laughs> no, but it's more like, um, you know, you want to you wanna convert everybody to what you think, you know? Yeah. They're... Uh, um, well, not even married, but word? when you get in a relationship. Really, no, I know, but, but what's the word... Um, when oh, I can't think, of I have no idea what word you're going okay. for. But anyway, it, it. But it's like that. Like I said, when when people quit smoking or when they quit drinking, they they're suddenly the, you know, the the champion of, you know, smoking is. Well, to be fair though, I mean, I I gotta admit, when I was when I was eating healthier before going to Hawaii, I did kind of do that a little. Now, I've, at first, maybe where I was just like, man, I I, I could see my everybody could see me losing weight. I feel a little bit better. You know, oh man, people, maybe people should try eating this. Other. I didn't necessarily go around handing out like pamphlets or no, anything but like that's that. That's the but problem, though, because a lot of people like this guy who announced himself as the, you know. Well, I mean, his, here, here's his very next quote We were kind of looking for new sponsors for this, and I'm a believer in the flat earth. I researched it for several months. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, um, well, even even this the, is no. That's what he said when he called in to the Flat Earth Web Show. That's what he said mm -hmm. to the. Because the next thing is the host sounded impressed. Hughes had actually flown in a rocket. He noted, whereas astronauts were merely paid actors performing in front of a CGI globe. It, oh, there's so I'm, there's so much more to this. Oh my god. Well, gosh. it's kind of funny because um, last weekend my best friend and I were watching. Um, Apollo 13. Right. Right. So we were talking about, um, about the space program and everything. And the, the funny thing is that the, the person who was the foremost, um, flight person at the time and everything else, everybody, I can't think of what his name is now. Oh, that's terrible. Um, but, uh, everybody wanted to know why he wasn't, why he wasn't one of the, one of the astronauts. And his thing was because the astronauts don't fly, they okay. they don't um, they don't control the spacecraft. The spacecraft is uh, it's all controlled from the ground. Well, that's like yeah, because like an engineer controls the spacecraft versus the astronauts tend to be more. Uh, it's 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 a, it's a different kind of science because they need to record. Stuff well, actually, that happens. this was this was going back to the beginning of the space program, and pretty much his quote was that they were PR people. Okay, you know what I mean. Yeah. Except, well, no, but I know that. I but know except, that, like, except during Apollo thirteen, had it not been for the fact that they were scientists, because I don't know if you know the story of Apollo thirteen. Not really. Okay, so basically, while they were while they were up there oh and I, God. I, I can't, I can't wait for a, uh, basically a film studies slash history course from you. <laughs> <laughs> the truth was, well, whatever the, the, <laughs> the idea was that while they were up there, there was, uh, a malfunction in the spacecraft. Uh -huh. So which, what they found out later when they were going to disengage, they were supposed to land on the moon and they never were able to do that. So, um, they had to when when they finally disengaged that part of the ship and they had to they ended up having to stay in the the capsule that was going to then eventually landed you've seen that where it's the little triangle thing that yes. floats down on the whatever yeah. well they had to stay in there because that was the only part of the ship that was that actually had enough power to function and so the problem was that they realized that they didn't they weren't going to have enough power to get back to earth okay okay so what what they did was one of the guys was supposed to the one of the one of the astronauts who was supposed to go on the flight had uh, a mumps scare okay right so he had he was he had to stay on earth because of course he couldn't have gone up there with that anyway is so, there, is there like, is there a reason? What? 
Because well, like because like you can't go if you have like a broken bone because they don't know what'll happen, right? No, no. Isn't that why you can't like is like right, certain that, stuff but, that no, but it was because because he was run you know, when you have the mumps you have you run the temperature and you know, he was sick. So he couldn't have gone because Yeah, but I don't understand. How do they know what would happen to you? They don't know, but he would have needed medical treatment. Oh, okay. If, if that's the if thing is was, like, have they ever do, like they say like, cause actually I, I always joke with you and with other people who've broken bones. Like, Oh, I could be an astronaut because I've never broken a bone. Cause as far as I know, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, because, uh, I know you can't be an astronaut if you've ever broken a bone. I'm not sure if this is the reason why, but from what I understand, they don't know how a bone, a bro, like a broken bone will react in like zero gravity and whatever. Yeah. But I did find out about a year or so ago that I couldn't actually be an astronaut anyway because I'm over six feet tall. And as far as I know, you have to be under six feet tall because when you go out, your spine stretches. So when you come back, everything compacts. So you actually end up smaller than you were when you went out. Like when you're in space, you're taller. Mm -hmm. And when you come back, you're actually smaller. And so there's like height because there's height and weight requirements for that because they they're they only you know the body will react a certain way i actually couldn't be an astronaut despite the no broken bones thing i'm too tall well that was one of the things uh that they that they had an issue with but what they had to do um they had to be able to like they had to restart they had to shut down all the power in order to conserve energy so that they could land but then they had to figure out how to restart everything in the right order so that everything would start. Well, they had never had to do that before. It was nobody, some, th nobody thought it was ever going to happen. Right, nobody uh, yeah. had any idea. So the guy who had the mumps had to come in. He didn't have the mumps. He, they but it was, yeah, that's why you said it was a right. scare. Yeah. But so he came in and he literally had to go, but they only had like so many amps of power yeah. that they could use. Yeah. And if it went over that, it wasn't going to work. So he spent like 24 hours trying to figure out how to restart everything and how to take power from one thing to another and whatever. And if he had not been an engineer right, to be able to figure out how to do that, and if they hadn't been able to follow his directions, because everything was normally done through the, um, through the, uh, all the, the, the flight things were done from the ground, but they had to actually do that up there. And one of the other things that they had to do was, um, no, wait, this is, this is the Tom Hanks movie, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but one of the things was that they, uh, they discovered that the, um, the oxygen, uh, the carbon dioxide, um, filters, right. Uh, the, the filters in the capsule weren't working. Well, not that they weren't working properly, but they were in there too long. They weren't, they weren't designed for them to have been in there the amount of time that they were. So they were literally running out of oxygen because they couldn't, uh, they, the, uh, CO2, uh, filters couldn't convert, couldn't, couldn't back. Yeah. yeah. So they weren't working. So the problem was the, <laughs> the filters from the capsule and the module were two different shapes. Oh. One was square and one was round. So Was it really round or was it flat though? Yeah. So the um what they had to do, the guys on the ground had to figure out a way to make this filter work with this system only using things that they actually had well, yeah, up you, in space. Yeah, because you could you could say all you want, like, oh, well, we've built a thing. Well, that does us no good when we're, we're right. So this not is, even on the planet that you're on. <laughs> right. So this is and like they had um it they had to use a plastic bag from something else, you know, like things that they had. Yeah. And then when they went to do it, they accidentally ripped one of the plastic bags. Well, they only had one more. And it was like, you know, so it's, like, so it's like, I mean, to put it in millennial terms, it's, it's, it was like extreme YouTuber D DIY stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was like, um, somebody made the comment that this is definitely, this was definitely a government, um, a government production because, you know, you have two filters 
on the spaceship and there's one is square and one is round. Like, why would you have made them so totally different? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you would think that, and then you were saying about, um, the, uh, it, it changes your weight and whatever. Um, the height. Yeah. Thing. Okay. yeah, yeah. I so one about. of the, one of the problems that they had was that, um, the plans for the capsule coming back, it was supposed to have, um, it was supposed to have moon rocks. It was supposed to have a large capacity. And like they didn't, a, they didn't take into account the extra weight that the rocks would well, they did. Take they did, but they, they they had to. So what they ended up doing was moving a lot of like junk from the the module into the capsule just to uh, have the added weight. Right. Okay. <laughs> because they had to they had to make sure that the weight was okay, and then they were worried because everything had been t- shut off for so long. They were worried that the uh, the rockets that set off the um um the parachutes weren't going to go off, <laughs> right. which would have been like a horrible thing. Anyway, is there more to your story? Oh, there is more because we didn't even get into where he talks about the second phase of his plan yet. Oh, okay. Dear. So here we go. Finishing Wait, up this. We, we're not over time. Right? No, no, we're still good. We okay. have uh, about 10 minutes till we hit an hour. So okay. if, we, if we go a few minutes over, which is good because we didn't think, think we were, we're going to make 45 <laughs> minutes. Yep. Um, okay. So his quote John Glenn and Neil Armstrong are Freemasons. Once you understand that, you understand the roots of the deception. (laughs) Why do the Masons get blamed for everything? Like, seriously? The host talked of Elon Musk's fake reality, and Hughes talked of Antichrist Illuminati stuff. After half an hour of this, the host told his 300-some listeners to back Hughes' exploration of space. So he did. He said all the right things. Yep, he used all the right buzzwords. Okay, yep. so according to Wikipedia, Elon, uh, Elon Reeve Musk is a South African business magnate, investor, engineer, and inventor. He is the founder, CEO, and CTO of SpaceX. Uh a co-founder, Series A investor, CEO, and product architect of Tesla. Well, he was okay. That's how, I knew I knew who he was because I've like seen him in various things. I've seen his name thrown around, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure if he if it was Tesla that was the like one of the main things. But yes, okay. So you you've heard of him before, right? I've no? heard the name, but I have no. Okay. Idea. Um, look him up on your own time. Focus on me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did I raise a needy child or uh, what? You raised an only child and that's the yeah, problem. <laughs> but you know, you've got a sister. So um, while there is, that's not true. Uh, while there is no one hypothesis. Wait, 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 wait. Melissa no. will be very sad if you don't, you know. While there is. Wait, what was that face for? N- no, no, no. Back up. I need to, I want to finish this. We're joking. Melissa is his cousin. She's like a sister, but not a sister. Yes. And there's a whole other story that goes to there's a sister. While there is no one hypothesis for what the flat earth is supposed to look like, many believers envision a flat disc ringed by sea ice, which naturally holds the oceans in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, then. What's beyond the sea ice, if anything, remains to be discovered. Quote, we need an individual who's not compromised by the government, the host told Hughes, and you could be that man, unquote. A flat earth GoFundMe subsequently raised nearly $8,000 for Hughes. Wow, they're just like building yeah. it up there. What did he want? He wanted 100000 He wanted, uh, he originally wanted, uh, where was it? I believe it was 150000 Yeah. Uh, Okay, by November, the Associated Press reported his $20,000 rocket had a fancy coat of Rust-Oleum paint, capital R, capital O. Rust-Oleum, yeah. Okay, I have no idea what that is. It's a brand of paint that basically, it's it's a a, uh, rust-resistant paint. Okay, and quote, in all caps, research flat earth, unquote, inscribed on the side. While his flat earth friends helped him finally get the thing built, the AP reported, Hughes will be making adjustments right up to Saturday's launch. 
but he won't be able to test the rocket before he climbs inside and attempts to steam himself at 500 miles per hour across a mile of desert air. And even if it's okay, so is this okay? This is the part that made this is the really, I mean, yes, obviously, several parts of this made me laugh, but this is the part that made me crack up hysterically and I had to stop reading the article even though it's almost near the end even if it's a success he promised his backers an even riskier launch within the next year into the space above the disc he told Ars Technica last year that the second phase of his mission might involve floating in a balloon up to 20,000 feet above the ground then rocket packing himself into outer space he is a giant. Well, first of all, he's I'm going sorry. To, he's gonna go up in a balloon, twenty thousand feet, and then put a rocket pack on himself and launch himself into space. He's going to steam himself <laughs> five hundred miles across the desert. Across five hundred okay. miles per hour, across oh, oh, one oh. mile of the desert. Okay, Base, it doesn't matter. He's going to steam himself. <laughs> like, excuse me. Quote. It's scary as hell, Hughes told the AP, but none of us are getting out of this world alive, unquote. <laughs> this is true, and yet, the article says, this is true, and yet some hope to live to see its edges. That's the end of the article. But yeah, that's, oh, um, are you glad that you did? I didn't tell you any of this yes, before? That's why that I was, didn't okay, so what, what, what people may not realize is when I, I read this at work the other day and I said, oh my gosh, I need to talk to this about somebody. And we had discussed recording this podcast to go up for uh, Black Friday. Um, and oh, so, so make sure you check the news to see if this guy actually. Yeah, the day after this, yeah, like yeah, yeah. A lobster because we will, we will have to do a follow up to this. Oh yeah, at some we need point. to. Yeah, because um, I want to know if he became a lobster or. You uh, know. Oh yeah, after we're done, I want to show you the video of where he he launched himself, and then they have to carry him out of the thing. Um, maybe I'll turn the mics back on after that, and you we could you could get we could get your okay. reaction quick, um, but. Uh, yeah, no, um, I, I knew that I wanted to talk about this and we, we had said, you know, uh, about doing this and I said, oh, I have an interesting article. Do you want to hear about it? And you were like, no. And I was like, okay, then. And, but it obviously it turns out that it's because you wanted to be fresh. Well, I told you that's, this. yeah, I don't like yeah. it when I have the, op well, I told you, I didn't want to do it because then I would have the opportunity to check it out myself and, and form other opinions. And it's more fun when I get to just. It's, more, well, it's, it's also more fun when you get to hear me read it in my my voice, like the you know, voices that I do. It's kind of funny, though, because I was thinking about it the other day. And do you remember back when you were little and we started reading Harry Potter? Not really. OK, so we started reading Harry Potter when I don't even remember how old you are, but we started reading the very first book. I think you had read it already, but we I had read the first one before you ever did. But other than that, I never read. Oh, them. So we were going, and this to was a few years at like, at least book four was out by then. Right. Excuse me. So we were, we were going to read it together. And so, um, the idea was I was going to read some and you were going to read some, and I was going to read some and you were going to read some and you hated having to be the one to read out loud. I don't like reading out loud. I to don't be fair, like... I still don't necessarily like reading out loud and because how many times do you ever hear me and I say like, oh, wait, am I pronouncing this word right? Like rust oleum? I've never heard of that right. before. But, but the funny thing is that you, first of all, you read to me, like you read articles at me all the time. Okay, but the see, my favorite part of that is I will read articles to you, especially if I haven't read them myself first. And like, I will read like a whole Wikipedia article to you and then I'll go, okay, what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read an article from top to bottom and I'll go, wait, what did I just say? Because I know- you understand that? Because I don't know. I know what all of those words are and I know how to say them all in order, but I wasn't actually listening to what I was saying. <laughs> but it's so funny because when you, like I, I was thinking about that the other day that when you were little and we were first reading, reading Harry Potter, you wanted, in, in, all, in all honesty, we've never actually finished reading Harry Potter. Way to out me in front of everybody <laughs> on that, Mom. I, that's something I keep I'm close to the vest. I'm further than you, though. Um, thank God for audiobooks. Um, but yeah, you never wanted to, you didn't want to be the one, it was, it was never your turn to read. It's your turn, Mom. And then you'd like read a paragraph and go, okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not the way it works. You know, like I wanted you to, 
and it was funny because well somehow I don't know I how it was probably just through school where they would do the okay and like it's funny because like as I got older in school because sometimes I'll do different voices when I say things I'll be like you know like okay there's a quote here like uh, let me just read one of his quotes again we want to do this and basically thumb our noses at all these billionaires trying to do this versus I'll read the regular sentence it was originally scheduled for early 2016 in a Kickstarter campaign from garage to outer space that mentioned nothing about a Illuminati astronauts and was, yeah, like I'll do certain like inflections like that. And teachers in high school would often say like, okay, I mean, and I'm not, and I don't mean this in like a braggy way, but like they would say like, okay, let's have Paul read something because I will put the different inflections because I know how, I know how sentence structures work. Well, and the thing too (laughs) is, well, yeah, because it's much more interesting uh, to listen. You used to like, well, as opposed to certain people would read like this. It was originally scheduled for early 2016 in a Kickstarter campaign from garage to outer space that mentioned nothing about Illuminati astronauts and was themed after a NASCAR event. We want to do this and basically thumb our noses at all these billionaires trying to do this, Hughes said in the pitch. See, I can't even say it like that because I'm like Hughes said in a pitch. Like I raised, I put a different inflection on it because it's just a natural thing for me. Well, in all fairness, when you were little... I used to, we used to read to you, your dad and I used to read to you and we read to you in voices. So there was no, uh, books weren't flat. Yeah. You know, they, they were But weren't. the earth is apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Apparently the earth is flat, but books were not. But we, we read to you with inflation. That's the title voices. of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> the earth is flat, but, but books, books are, are not. not. <laughs> but you know, like we, and that was one of the, one of the things that, um, when you were, when you were doing the, the news uh, broadcasts and stuff, that was why as much as you like to be behind the camera and behind the scenes, that was why uh, Mr. Dennis used to like to have you on air because you had personality. And I don't think so. You don't think that's why he wanted I don't think I have personality. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Um, uh, honestly, we are like a minute over an hour and because I want to potentially get your reaction to seeing this video, I think we should sign off now. Maybe we'll have a one or two. If, if that's the case in a, in a few seconds, you'll be hearing the reaction to the, uh, 20, what was it? what did I say? It was 2014 video where the guy, uh, the, where he first launched himself, a uh, quarter mile over a section of Arizona. So um, you're not really on social media, but do you want to, do you have anything that you would want to plug for people to follow or any, cause you're not really on like anything. No, I'm never really on anything. Okay. I mean, I have, we, you know, we have a business page for our, for our, you know, t- if y'all want to follow my face painting business, but that's really, you know, more. Well, I mean, if anybody's anything. watched the live videos, they've, they, that one, they did see you yeah. f- paint your, paint your face or whatever. So, and if you haven't go to the clock shelves, Facebook page, the live, uh, uh, the live streams are still there on demand there at any point, And you could see my mother paint her face. So maybe they will be interested. Go ahead and pitch, pitch your, oh, we're, uh, we're just playing crazy face And the funny thing is that as we're sitting here, talking about this what do i look like a two-minute tiger yeah (laughs) i'm part of a group on facebook that uh does uh face painting every day and i'm coming up on a year so today's uh inspiration to paint was a two-minute tiger so i'm sitting here with my face painted like a tiger but to me that's it's a typical day that ends in Y at, yes, at, in, in, at Casa Casey, Casey slash the clock shelf studio. Um, but okay. So mother Ruth Casey, I don't mom, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. He calls me crazy. It's okay. That's yeah. what everybody does. Thank you so much for being on the show and sitting down and talking with me. Thanks for having me. And I'll be back again as soon as you let me. Of course. Uh, I'm going to sign off. Well, I don't really have a sign off for this show, so I'm just going to say, uh, thank you. Bye. Perhaps you'll hear us again in a few seconds. Um, But if not, uh, follow everything Clock Shelves, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, I'm trying to build up the Snapchat thing. So send us stuff of yourself listening to these episodes. That'd be really cool for me to see. Um, At Clock Shelves, across all those things, uh, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Clock Shelves Entertainment Presents, four separate words and soundcloud.com slash clock shelves. Uh, 
Thank you once again, Mom, for being on the show. Thank hey, you, happy everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. For listening. Yes. Have a hope. Hopefully, everybody survived uh, Black Friday. Yeah. Um, and don't forget, the day after this episode goes out, check out whatever this guy did and see if he on Saturday see it, what, what happened. What was his name? Uh, his name is uh, Mike Hughes. Uh, probably if you type in something, Mike Hughes Flat Earth or something, it'll come up. Um, like I said, we'll have to do a follow up to this. Yeah. Um, but thanks everybody for listening and that will do it for us. Bye. Okay. Hey everybody. Um, quick, uh, she just watched the video. It's like a minute 13. If you go to that Washington post article, it's, uh, in the middle of the article, they link to several different things throughout the article. So, uh, you can definitely find it there. Like I said, it's only a minute 13. Um, but you just watched it. I didn't think it was um, we, the way you described it was them dragging him out of. That's it. how the first of all, that's how the article described it. Now, okay. don't forget also, if, if you remember in the article, this guy is a limo driver. Like yeah. that's what he does. I know, but like I thought it was going to be much worse. I mean, granted, when they show, they show the the rocket going through the air. And then they show film from the rocket, and you can see bits flying that off was, from that it. That was what you said. Yeah. You're like, what um, are those pieces, pieces flying yeah, off there? Yeah, there were there? things flying off from it. And then they, as they pulled him out, he was making some kind of noises. And then as they're trying to lift him, instead of, like, putting him on a stretcher or something, because whatever. Yeah, why not going, have medical personnel yeah, there? they're going, uh, watch his bad shoulder. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And, and they're, they're lifting him directly by his arms. Yeah, they're pulling his arms to lift him up. And I'm like... Okay, that doesn't make sense, but yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I did like the thing at the end because obviously this it was from what did I say twenty fourteen. Yeah. So the thing at the at the end said like watch for coming events twenty fifteen. Yeah. I, <laughs> oh my my favorite part was across the bottom, it said, uh, you know this video is copyrighted to yeah. so and so. Like who do you think is going to steal this? Like really. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe yeah. for like like one of like a, like a Tosh point oh show, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> like, maybe something like that. But yeah, but, pretty much no. Okay, so that was so it wasn't as bad as you thought, but it was still pretty bad. Like the fact that this guy is attempting this, and now he and if you remember, according to the article, he's not going to get to he's going to be making adjustments right up until before he launches, and okay. he's not going to get to test anything before he launches. He can't do anything. Well, no, because he's got one shot at this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it, it... And don't forget, people, his second phase is going up in a balloon and then rocket packing himself <laughs> into yeah, space. I'm not <laughs> sure that that is a plan that I would stand behind. But obviously, this man is a bachelor because <laughs> no woman in the world would let a guy... You think? I, what, I, do I think he's a bachelor? Yeah. Um, unless she has a really good insurance policy on him... I'm thinking we will have to look that up for our follow up discussion yeah, on because this because that was another one. I probably put my foot in my mouth, but I just think that, you know, I, I, I can't I, let's put it this way. I don't think that he's married to anybody because chances are maybe he's, you know, I don't know. Maybe he has a husband, maybe whatever, but I don't think so. I think he's a very lonely um a very lonely limo driver. It's very possible. <laughs> you know? Um but okay, so we got the quick follow-up, and that was it. Okay. Uh, once again, bye, everybody. Thanks for listening.